Hello, I'm your host, Alex Freeberg, and this is the Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are gonna be talking about data analyst salaries and everything that comes along with it. The salary is obviously a very large part of your total compensation, but there are other things that you really should be considering and thinking about when you're accepting a job offer. And so for all those people out there who you know are looking for jobs or you know getting interviews and they're about to accept a job, I really hope that this will be helpful to you so that you can kind of focus on the things or know about things that I had no idea about, especially when I was first starting out. Um, some of the things that we're gonna be focusing on today are my past salaries as well as my current salary. We're gonna be looking at salary expectations and then other things that are um, kind of included or you know are part of that total compensation that we were talking about, like 401k, bonuses, tuition reimbursement, and ESPP, which is Employee Stock Purchasing Program. These are just a few of the things I might go off on some tangents. You, you know, you guys have watched the show, you understand. So um, let's start off with, you know, just my salaries, where I've been and where I currently am at. Um, and we'll just go from there. So, you know, I know I have a whole video on this, so I'm not going to go super in depth into this, I promise you. But to start really quickly, my very, very first data analyst job was at a nonprofit. I was making 47000 um, and the benefits there were pretty bad. Um, it, it was nothing to write home about. It was um, kind of bottom of the barrel, really expensive insurance, uh, not, not super great. My second job as a data analyst, and this is what I would consider my true, first true data analyst position, was at a healthcare analytics company. I was making 63,000. The insurance there was still, um, it was still pretty expensive. Um, I think it's double what I'm paying now. And I wasn't even on the best plan at, that, at the healthcare analytics company. I was on like the third best plan. It was still double the plan I'm on now. And the plan I'm on now is really good. It's the, the best plan I can get. So, you know, something to consider. Uh, the next job that I got was at a Fortune 500 company. I was making 76,000 a year, and but that was, um, I was getting paid hourly. And so I think I was making like $32 an hour, uh, something around there, maybe $35 an hour. I can't remember. 76, I think actually, if it's 76,000, I believe that's, $38 an hour. I keep changing it up. Somebody look that up for me <laughs> because I don't know. Um, I can't remember, but I was making 76,000, uh, but it was an hourly position. Um, and that was a junior data analyst position. So I took a data analyst position and I actually took a, um, a title cut, if you want to say it that way, to a junior data analyst position. I was just trying to get my foot in the door um, to a larger company. Then I got a promotion from that junior data analyst position. They they brought me on full time, which is what I was hoping for. They gave me a promotion to a data analyst two position. So, uh, you know, it was 92,000 a year with an 8% bonus. And I, I just recently uh, can update this because I just had a, my conversation and signed off all the, on the paperwork for my, um, my merit increase, which was 3%. So now I'm, I believe I'm at 95,000. Um, with it still an 8% bonus each year. So um, that's where I'm at, uh, just to be like super transparent with you. And, and I think, you know, that's really gonna play into the salary expectations going into this, uh, which is the next thing I wanna talk about. And then I think, you know, I genuinely think the next part of this, which, you know, salary expectations, it's pretty straightforward. The next part of this, which is on all these other things that I was talking about at the beginning, are things that I just, had no idea about. Maybe it was just because I was really naive about real life um, and work. Because I maybe I was just like really stupid, um, and it was only me. It's very possible that this was just me who didn't know about these things. Because uh, everyone who I work with now knows this stuff, but I it could just be me. But hopefully, if you didn't know it, it'll be useful to you. But salary expectations. So, um, you know, I've made dedicated videos to this. But I want what I want to say is. Your expectations on your salary should be pretty low when you're first starting out. Um, there is, you know, kind of an expectation or a belief that you can make a lot of money right away in data analytics, which can be true in certain industries. Now, I'm not discounting that at all. And especially if you live in specific places, like you live in a very large um, 
city or you live in a, you know, like California, like the Bay Area, you're much more likely to make more than, you know, other places. But in terms of salary expectation, one one thing that I would mention is you really need to do your research. Like your research is, um, it's very important. Um, and before I get into that too much, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. I, I recorded um, last week's video a couple of days ago, and I'm releasing this one the week after last week's video. It probably doesn't make sense, but I had asked for feedback. I said, hey, if you can hear me drinking my coffee, I'm not going to do it anymore. I haven't released that video yet, so I haven't gotten feedback on it, so I'm going to keep doing it. Then if I, if you give me feedback and say you can hear it, I won't do it anymore. But, you know, take that into consideration if you were watching this and I'm still doing it. It's because I haven't released that video yet. And honestly, I really need this because when I get talking a lot, my throat gets completely dry. And so I really do need this. So salary expectations, you know, you need to do your research. Uh, research is extremely important. You need, especially for where you live, because every place is different. You know, uh, the middle of nowhere in Kansas is going to be very, very different um, than, you know, Dallas, Texas, which is where I live. Very different. You know, maybe in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, 30K is like, you know, it's a pretty good salary. I don't know. But if you have 30K in Dallas, Texas, you are, it's like minimum wage. Uh, and I've been there. I know what minimum wages is, is like. And so, uh, you know, you really need to do your research. So again, location is very important. Also, the industry that you're going into is very important. If you're going into a nonprofit, you should not be expecting, you know, the pay of a large tech company. I think that's very obvious uh, because of that comparison. But a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm going into healthcare. That's got to be the same or, you know, similar to tech or it's got to be the similar, same as finance or banking or, or any of these other fields. And there is just not, it's not the same. The kind of work you, you do may be slightly different depending on your domain. Um, the specialties that you mean, may need to get, the credentials that you may need to get are all different uh, based on your industry. And so domain knowledge and um, the industry that you're going into it, it, it makes a huge difference in what you should be expecting. Uh, the other thing is, is if you already have a data analyst job, you know, you need to know your worth. You need to understand how much you're getting paid and how much you should be getting paid, which is probably, for the most part, you're typically making less than what you're supposed to be paying when you first start out, right? Uh, you take that job to get your foot in the door making 35000 45000 maybe 50000 um, Whereas, you know, you have a master's degree or, or a PhD, who knows, and you should be making like 75, 80 at, yeah, at least, but you don't know that or, you know, those jobs just weren't really readily available at the time, so you didn't take them. Um, again, salary expectations should very much be a specific thing that each person needs to look into. I hate generalizing it, um, which I'm about to do. I hate generalizing it because um, every single person and every single city and location and industry is different. So what I'm about to say, I hate saying it, but I'm going to say it anyways. A general salary when you're first starting out is anywhere from about $45,000 to $55,000-ish. Um, it can go upwards of sixty five. dollars It can go lowest of like thirty. dollars um, And again, all those things need to be considered and looked into before you, you know, start getting upset about your local job market. All right? If you live in the middle of nowhere in Kansas, expect a lower salary. It's just, it's going to happen. So, you know, in general, you shouldn't be expecting more than about 65000 right when you start out. And, you know, I don't think I was expecting anything more. I was super happy to be making 47000 when I first started out at a nonprofit. That, to me, was like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm making so much money. I was like, I could keep this job forever. I could see me growing old in this job just riding it out, getting a 2% increase every year for the next 20 years, I could see it. And then I started to realize what I was actually worth with new skills like SQL and Tableau. And I was like, whoa, I'm worth a lot more than 47,000. I, I need to jump on this and figure this out. Um, and so knowing your worth, knowing your industry, knowing your location, extremely important. One place that I go um, that I personally have found pretty accurate 
not everybody agrees, but I personally found is almost spot on for the jobs that I'm applying for, the domain I'm applying for is Glassdoor. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Glassdoor. Um, it's just a website that is like a, it's a job postings website, but they have a salary calculator on there. Um, as well as you can like look up, um, you know, average salaries in certain locations or in industries. And there's like drop down for it. I have a whole video on that. So you can go check that out. Um, you know, if you're curious about how to use it, I think it's just called like data analyst salary in 2020. I don't remember exactly what it was. Okay. I want to move on to the section that I think will take up the most time, which is um, other things that are included in your total compensation. So other things that are, I'm, I'm going to list them out and then we'll kind of talk about them. 401k bonuses, tuition reimbursement, ESPP, which is the employee stock purchasing program. Okay. So the very first one is 401k. If you don't know what a 401k is, it's, it's important. Okay. It is important to have a 401k. That is what you, you set aside a little bit of money each month. It's capped out. Um, you, there is a certain amount that you can put in every year uh, that the government uh, kind of sets. Um, it's like, I believe it's a percentage based on your income or your tax bracket or something like that. I can't um, exactly remember. I don't max it out, so I don't know. Um, but you set aside that money and you in, basically are investing that money into lots of different things. Um, most people just do it into some like stocks or, or some, you know, I think it's like mutual funds or something like that. Uh, I am not an investment pro. So, you know, take that, take it for what it is. But you, you set aside money and over time it compounds on itself, it grows and you end up, um, you know, say you invest $100,000 in, into it over the course of 30 years, now it's worth like a million dollars. Completely random numbers made up, but it is a big increase from the money that you set aside. And it's supposed to be something that you do long term to build wealth over a long period of time while you work. That's what a 401k is. Now, some jobs have something called um, a 401k match. Uh, my company does up to 3%. They do 100% match. So if I put 3% of my salary away, they are going to match that and put 3% of my salary away as well. So it's 3% free money of anything I put away. So say I put $100, um, that's 3% of my salary. $100 into my 401k, they will match that $100. Um, after that, they'll match up to 5% at half a percent for each. So if I put in an additional $100, for those last 2%, um, percent, they're going to put in $50. So they'll match half of it. So if I put in $200 total, they will put in $150. Now, you know, that doesn't sound like much, but again, this is a long-term investment strategy to build wealth over the long term for your retirement, um, for you to um, pass off to your future generations, right? So that's what 401k is. And, and 401ks are very important. I've quickly learned. Um, and that's why I've started investing in it myself um, for the past couple of years. So, you know, it's really, it's kind of almost, I don't want to say this in a, I don't want to say it's in a bad way, but stupid not to ask about these things in a job interview. Um, and it kind of seems crass, you know, you're like, you want to say, you want to look like you're taking that job because you like the work and you love the work and you are there for the job, which is, could be a hundred percent true. But you're also there because of money, because if their money was involved, you would not be there. And so when you're asking about the salary, you can ask about other things rather than just the actual salary. You can say, hey, you know, I see this is the salary. Do you guys have any other added benefits on top of that? Things like, I, you know, some of the things that I'm interested in are things like tuition reimbursement, 401k. Um, you guys do a bonus program, anything like that. And you just ask, you can throw it out there and they can be like, oh yeah, we match 401k up to 5%. It's a super easy thing to ask. They will not stray away from it and be like, ah, we don't, we don't talk about that here. All right, 401ks, those are, that's privileged confidential information. It will never happen. It's very common to ask about. And it's, it, it, it kind of is something that if you don't ask it, it's like, you know, you're missing out on potentially free money is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's 401k. Again, you probably know about it already, but if you don't, that's what it is. That's what you're supposed to be doing and you should ask about it. Next thing is bonuses. Now, full disclosure, I got my very, I got my second bonus ever. Um, my very first bonus was at a previous job 
Um, that was at the healthcare analytics company. I was making 63000 And there was no bonus written into, um, into like my job description or my, or my uh, paperwork that I signed. There was no, no bonus was written in there. But the CEO came around, said we had a good year, and handed me a check for 500 bucks. And it was, I mean, <laughs> I, I went home to my wife, and honestly, I was like, babe, I got $500 for free. Like, this is amazing. I was like, this is why I'm working here. I'm just like, I'm staying here forever. Uh, I quickly realized 500 bucks isn't that much, but I do remember just feeling that is amazing. Um, a bonus just feels like a little added extra perk it, it, it feels good. I hope that if you've never experienced what it feels like to get a bonus, that you feel what it's like, because it is exhilarating. I was like, I didn't work for this money, but I got it anyways. Um, that's kind of how it felt. Although it's not true, as part of their, their process um, for a lot of these companies, it's like the bonus is written into your contract that's part of your total compensation. They know all the numbers on the back end. Um, I just, I haven't thought about it that much. And so it was like a huge thing for me. The bonus that I got this year was my very first bonus at my current company. It was substantially larger than uh, the previous bonus. It was around seven thousand. Uh, again, this time I was I took it a little bit more like a professional. I was like I was like, "Yep, that sounds great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You know, we've had a really good year. Glad to have it." Um, and that was with my boss, and so much more professional because when I got it, I was like, "Wow, five hundred dollars! This is amazing." Um, again, I just didn't have much experience in the job in, in like prof being a professional. Um, and so, you know, I look back and I, I just, um, it wasn't that long ago, but I just, I think, you know, I was, I was a little, I was a little naive, a little ignorant of certain things that I wish I had been more, um, I wish I'd been more aware of, right? Things that we're talking about now, I did not know about three, four years ago. And so Hopefully, again, hopefully these things are helpful. So bonuses are important. You can ask them if they have any type of bonus program, if they have any type of merit increases per year. Like, um, and that's, I didn't write that in, but along the line of bonuses, it's typically a merit increase. So every year you get a merit increase if your company does well. My company does up to 3%, and so I got a 3% increase this year because we did well. I also performed well. And so with those two things combined, they give you the increase or they, they sign off on that increase. So bonuses and, and um, merit increases are things that you can absolutely ask about in an interview. Um, things that are important. Those are, you know, set structured things that they should have written into their um, company. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, I'm going to do a time check really quick because I don't know how far. Okay. I'm doing, doing okay on time. I need to, I might need to speed it up a little bit. Tuition reimbursement. Uh, tuition reimbursement is something that I've never had before. I still haven't even used, to be honest, and it's free money sitting there that I absolutely need to use. Um, it's just with COVID and everything going on and working from home and not having much time to myself, I haven't been able to use, although honestly, I need to use it. Tuition reimbursement is something that some companies have where if you pay, uh, they will reimburse you up to a certain amount of money for anything related to your, your higher education. So most of the time that's related to like a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, some type of accredited institution. Um, and if you, let's say you go to um, Harvard, and you, you, you enroll in some Harvard classes and you pay $5,000. Well, your, your company may say, we'll pay up to $5,000 and we'll reimburse you if you make a certain grade. That's what my company does at least. I, maybe not every company. But if you make a C or above, we will reimburse you the entire amount for anything. Books, um, tuition, parking, anything up to $5,000. Anything after that, that's you and that's totally fine. Um, I think this one you know, may not be something that you actually ask for in an interview. You don't have to. But if they do have it, that's free money. I will 100% be using this at my current company. Um, I, I absolutely want to go back and get a master's degree. If, if anything else, I just want to walk through the process of going through the enrollment, get a few classes in, and then, you know, eventually over the next couple of years, get my master's. It doesn't have to be all at once. Um, but at least start using that money because it's free money and they will pay me for it. And I guarantee you I can, I can make a year better. I'm very confident in that. So that's what tuition reimbursement is. Really cool program that a lot of companies do have. The last one is Employee Stock Purchasing Program, ESPP. 
This is for publicly traded companies. Um, so they, if they have an IPO, your company may have this program where you can buy stocks um, for that company at a lower price. So my company, I believe, does 85%. So I can buy, so say it's $100 at, currently at the stock, um, or the stock price is currently $100. I get to buy it for $85. And then if I sell it back, uh, or if I sell that stock, I can sell it at that $100. So I'll make $15 per um, stock that I purchase. That is really, really, in a, in a nutshell, what it is. And it's not super hard. It's just you get a discount on stocks. <laughs> it's super, super easy. Um, and so if you're going to a large company or Fortune 500 company or any company that has an IPO, they should or most likely have something like this. And so you should ask about it because, you know, again, it, it's something that they will absolutely answer and they'll be just kind of impressed that you even know what that is. Um, at least I'd be impressed. And that may, may, may not mean anything to you. Um, but so, these are all things that you can ask about, right, in an interview. That's kind of where I'm going for. Um, all that being said, and I want to wrap this up and then we'll go into some few other segments that uh, I find enjoyable because I need to, otherwise I'm going to run out of time, is, you know, salary is super important. You would not be going to work if you were not getting a salary. That's my guess. That, that's the truth for me. If I was not getting paid, I would not be there. And so, you know, ask about things, research things. Everything that we've discussed today are things that I wish I had done when I was first starting out. I just didn't have anybody to tell me that, I, that this was important. I didn't know my worth. I did not know about bonuses, um, uh, salary expectations, 401k. I just didn't know about those things. Um, and so hopefully, you know, this has been helpful and, and you'll – Take some of these things to heart and look into these things, and then you'll be well more better equipped and more prepared for your next job interview or next job uh, in, in general. So that is that. Let's move on to the next segment. But before we do, huge shout out to the people over at Patreon supporting this channel, supporting me, supporting everything I do. You guys make all of this possible. You guys are my favorite people. Out of all my subscribers, you guys are my favorite. And that's not, a, that's not a dig at everybody else. Uh, I think currently, let me check. At the filming of this video, we just hit 17,000 um, subscribers, which is way more than I ever thought I would get, to be honest. Um, and I have about 25 that support me on Patreon, and you guys are my favorite. So very small percentage. And if you want to be part of that percentage, if you want to be somebody who I like more than everyone else, Go support me on Patreon. I would appreciate it. I really would. Um, we are getting into a time of the show, a segment of the show that I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and I may have to speed up a little bit. I, I'm running long today, which is strange for me. I'm not much of a talker. Um, the question of the week is a very good one. And I'm going to have to keep it abbreviated in my response. But it's a very good question. It's from Faustin Gashakamba, and he asks, I'm getting, assuming it's a he, he asks, what the heck is the fuss about Tableau? I am learning R and think its data visualization is enough. Do I need to learn an additional data visualization tool? Tableau, why do I recommend it? Why does it, what's all the fuss? That's what, that's what Faustin wants to know. The fuss is, and, and I'm going to answer all your questions in like a few sentences um, or a few main thoughts is that R is a very good thing to learn. If you have the ability to learn it, go for it. I recommend Python over R, but if you're learning R, fantastic. It's still very, very good. You don't need to learn Tableau if you know R, but I would still recommend learning Tableau if you know R, and here's why. Marketability. A lot of companies do not use R. A lot of companies don't use Tableau. But if you know both, you open yourself up to a larger market. That's why I know both Tableau, Power BI, and Python pretty well. Because I can find a job a lot more easily or, or a lot easier because I know these things. Tableau is very well known, is established, it is used in a lot of companies, and it shows that if you know Tableau, you know the basics of data visualization. Whereas, um, you know, other skills you may... R is, is definitely data visualization heavy, of course. But, you know, if they use Tableau, R may not be useful to them. And so you kind of cut yourself out, cut yourself out of that job. Um, you, they won't hire you because you only know R. 
So again, it's just about marketability. It's about, and, and Tableau is not hard to learn. If you know R, you can learn Tableau very easily. It's my opinion. So again, marketability. Um, the very last thing on the show, very last segment, if you have stuck around to the very end, uh, kudos to you. I think this is a long episode. Um, may not be. I think it's like 27 minutes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting hyper-focused on the time, genuinely. Um, and I apologize for that. I'm like, I keep checking it. And I don't often do that, but when I'm running close to time, I kind of get a little fidgety. Because um, I try to keep these under 30 minutes. That is my goal. I don't want it to go like 45 minutes, an hour. This is, to me, it's too long. I wouldn't want to listen to that in like my morning commute or like my morning podcast or, you know, whatever you're doing. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it under that. So I apologize if I'm like annoying you with my focusing on that. If you have watched until now, if you've stuck around all of my ranting at the end, like I normally do, you have come to a place that not many have ventured to. And because of that, you now have the ability to write in the comment section below a very specific keyword, keeping it vegetable based, of course, uh, is mushroom. If you wanna put in the chat below or in the comment section below, mushroom, you're in a very elite squad of people, the mushroom squad. That's not a thing, but I just made that up on the spot. All that's to be said is you made it. And I appreciate you sticking around. You guys care about your salary. You guys care about how much money you make and, and your future more than everybody else who dropped off or way earlier when I started talking about nonsense or sipping, sipping my coffee. You guys are better than them. I'm actually not going to drink anymore because I have like 30 seconds left. But all that to be said is I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you joining the show. Always means a lot to me. There are a lot of people that join um, uh, not this far. But there's a lot of people that join. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for everything. Genuinely. Uh, have a good week. I will see you next week on the next Alex Handler show. And goodbye.